what is the difference between Rhema and Lagos? I know people say Logos, which is fine, but it, it, it's, it's properly called Lagos. What is the difference between Rhema and Lagos? You have probably heard it stated in so many different times, different ways, and in most cases, you've probably heard it stated incorrectly. There really is no difference between Lagos and Rhema. I'll, I'll pull this up in just a little bit, let you look at the Greek and even the definitions and so forth. There really isn't. They, they can be and are in the Bible used interchangeably. And there is a suspicion among some people that when John brings up the word in Genesis, I mean, in Revelation, Revelation, in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the Lagos, that he is tapping into two things that he's dealing with, uh, the minds of the Jews, as well as the mind of the Gentiles, specifically those who are philosophical by bringing in the word uh, Lagos, because in their culture, Lagos may have had a little bit deeper meaning, but uh, the term Lagos, generically in and of itself, doesn't really have that deep of a meaning. You can make any word have a deep meaning. You can you can make a word, you can turn a word into uh, a metaphor if you'd like. It's not what John is doing in John 1. The word uh, doesn't have some sort of metaphorical meaning. Um, he's trying to bring something out. But generically, though, lagos and rhema means the same thing. But people, you'll hear people saying, and you often see it, not often see it, I, I take it back because I was going to say that you see it a lot of times in the Pentecostal charismatic movement where they'll say you need a fresh word, a rhema word. Well, a rhema word is no different than a Lagos word. <laughs> Matter of fact, a rhema word, that, it doesn't even make any sense. It's kind of redundant to say a rhema word because a rhema is word. So let's go ahead and pull that uh, up on the screen so that you guys can see what I am talking about. Uh, let's go to, let's see, I'm going to pull up two different examples. I'll pull up. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 6.17, and let's look at the definition for the word, word. So you see on the right, on the, on the right-hand side, the left-hand side, uh, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, what I want to do is just look at the term word of God. So we're going to look at it two different times in the Bible where it says the word of God uh, and in both cases, both cases are being spoken of by Paul. So Paul is using the term word of God. One instance, he's going to use the word lagos. Another instance, he's going to mean the, he's going to use the word rhema, the exact same meaning. So here we have uh, in, in the English, the word, look to the right side. In this case, ha esten rhema theu. So it is uh, the word of God, but it's rhema. So let's go ahead and let's pull up. So I want you guys to all see this. Uh, Rhema, which we're looking, let's go to the Mount's Dictionary. Rhema, if you see the definition here, let's, if I can, um, let me make it a little bit bigger so you all can see that. This word means that which is spoken, declaration, uh, saying, speech, word. That's what it, that's what it is. It's a declaration. It's a saying. It's a, it's a speech. It's a word. Uh, it's a word. It's a matter. It's a thing. All right. That's literally what, what the word means in, in Greek. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 36. 14, 36, and Paul's going to use the exact same phrase here for the word of God. And in this case, we'll see the definition of it. Let's put it back on the screen. Let's find the word. There it is. Here's the word, word right here for lagos. Let's, let's click it. And so notice the definition is the same. Uh-oh, wrong one. Let's put it on. Uh, a word, a thing uttered, speech, language, talk. And it's used the exact same way. It's used the exact same way. Remember, we're still talking about, we're still bringing up the word of God. That's the phrase, the word of God. And so sometimes I think people try to go deeper than they need to go. Uh, the words are used interchangeably. Well, why? Why would, if, if words have meaning, why use Rhema here and why use Lagos there? Surely they must mean something different. Well, the same thing we do. Uh, I tell my, my little grandson who's been disobedient, I said, uh, sit your little tail down or sit your little behind down. I mean the exact same thing. I didn't, I didn't choose the word to give any extra emphasis. I'm just using, uh, pulling out out of the assortment of words we have at our disposal. And so sometimes uh, the words are just used interchangeably. Uh, rhema can be used. Now, a lot of times you'll see rhema uh, is used uh, when 
let's say you're, you're trying to invoke what God is saying, but you know what? You can say the same thing. It happens also when God is speaking. And so, and by the way, both uh, Rama can also be used as a verb as well. You see that too. So, uh, technically both words are the same. They're, 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 inter they're used interchangeably. So I wouldn't make too big of a deal. I would not start off or try to say something and try to be too profound by using the word rhema as though it's a, a different or a greater meaning other than logos. I would not. But if you want to, hey, you knock yourself out, but you really don't find grammatically any real basis in doing so.